Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com weekend update show. Hope everybody's having a great weekend. Uh, if you live in the Northeast, you're kind of like me. We're sitting here just watching the raindrops, complete washout for Saturday and Sunday. So hopefully you guys are uh, keeping yourself busy, looking at charts, preparing yourself uh, for the weekend, trying to have some fun uh, in the process. So let's talk about it, right? Let's talk about the market. Before we do, if you are brand new to us, uh, we invite you to come aboard, right? Spend 15 minutes a day with us. Uh, like, share, subscribe, help the channel out. We'll try to help you out, uh, navigate this journey on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, but most important is via unbiased technical analysis. So, so let's talk about the week. Uh, the, the highlight of the week was the anticipated uh, FOMC meeting that was held on Wednesday. Uh, on the surface, they held rates in check which kind of, you know, at least initially told people, well, maybe this inflation thing uh, is under control. And then Powell started the Q&A, as we talked about on the weekend, on the Wednesday video. And he started talking about, uh, obviously, a window with potential more hikes. We already knew that that wasn't going to be anything to surprise, but the market did not want to hear that. And the market started selling off pretty aggressively. And all this has been going on, if you guys remember, we've been going over and under the 50-day moving average for about a month. In, in the last five days, we clearly got below the 50 day, started building below the 50 day, and now we are very, very close. And we'll talk about the ramifications here uh, in a few minutes. We're very, very close losing this whole big macro channel, this rising support on the queues. But the most important part was it was the fear aspect, right? And a lot of traders still remember 2022 when they started 2022 buying the dip below the 50-day moving average, and they kept on dipping and dipping and dipping. And you saw some stocks like a UPSC. I'm just using UPSC as an example. You know, some stocks are down 70, 80 uh, percent off their highs, and it, and it really uh, brought back a lot of really bad memories for uh, perma bulls. And when you look at how the technology space, especially uh, performed this week or underperformed this week, you, it's it's a really it, it really kind of a highlighted sign of what potentially could happen next if the bulls don't uh, defend very, very key levels. When you look at uh, the final tally, you have the SPX down 3% for the week, the Dow down 2% in the week, and the NASDAQ got hit the hardest 3.6% uh, uh, for the week. And when you look at all these big tech names, and we'll go through some charts here, you'll kind of see the same thing kind of correlating or mirroring where the NASDAQ 100 is kind of playing out and what's a uh, line in the sand for the NASDAQ 100 is obviously going to be a line in the sand for a lot of technology names as well. So let's go through some names, kind of give you an overview of what potentially we might be looking at here. So Microsoft, uh, again, just like NASDAQ 100, is below the 50-day moving average. Uh, also got below the 100-day EMA that the Qs are trying to hold on to. Uh, very, very important uh, for dear life to start the week. And you can see this macro channel developing from the lows from August 18th. If Microsoft starts confirming, especially Fridays, Thursdays, lows, we can see the bottom channel of uh, bottom channel of August 18 lows. Very, very important to understand that. Uh, Amazon, right? We we we, uh, we talked about a week ago. You know, I had a really good move on Amazon go from you know two weeks ago. You know, broke out above uh, 4360s, went up to almost 46 pre-market. And then next thing you know, just like the rug completely got pulled, correlated obviously with the selling with the whole space. And now Amazon is sitting right on, you know, right on rising, you know, big trend line support here of uh, of the 100 day uh, SMA. So again, things are getting very, very hairy. A name like AMD, uh, excuse me, a name like, uh, yeah, AMD, right? AMD, again, has been predominantly below the 50 day moving average, right? And this stock has been getting killed, killed, killed like nonstop. And we're approaching a major trend line as well. Tesla will go over to Tesla really saved, saved my day on Friday. We'll get to individual pivots there in a second. But Tesla lost its 50 day moving average, right? Lost its 50 day. Um, I think this is a scenario we could probably see uh, 238, you know, around the 240, 238 level, maybe even the 235 level this week. 
uh, if we get one more push down, especially on Monday. Uh, and a name like Apple, look how, guys, look how big this channel is of Apple. This one really, really caught my attention last week, and we've been just waiting for a couple of days uh, for this thing to confirm. I think this could be a really exaggerated potential swan dive effect. If you look at this channel, it's going all the way back to 818, which is correlating with a lot of stocks on the summer lows. But if it starts taking down this whole channel here, guys, this is a long channel. We're, we're almost in October. If it starts taking down this whole channel here, we could really, really get a move uh, into the 170 area for Apple uh, going into next week. Uh, if you look at the SPY, for example, uh, again, kind of the same thing as the Qs. Uh, a lot of names have gotten really beat up. Again, as you know, SPY is uh, a hodgepodge of technology, banks, uh, energy, retail. And speaking of retail, man, look at names like KSS. Look at name like Target. Again, this is a you know this is a really big. A uh, big kind of showpiece of showing consumer confidence, right? Consumer spending or lack of spending. If you look at the the if you look at the retail names uh, versus technology, although technology has looked bad, the technology has looked bad for about a week and a half. Techno uh, you know, stocks like uh, Target and Kohl's, they've been getting a hit hard uh, all the way since uh, springtime. So uh, it really is an ugly picture uh, going into uh, next week. Here's what the market needs to do, right? Here is what it needs to do. Some levels that the, the market needs to hold on to. And I'll go through uh, in each individual, uh, each individual ETF. So this whole area here is the 100-day EMA of the Qs. As you can see here, two days in a row, the Qs are trying to hold on to their desperately. Um, but Thursday, we had that big, big macro sell-off. Friday, we actually gapped up about 100 points. Uh, and I sat there in the webinar and I said, I'm not buying a damn thing. I'm not buying a damn thing because, again, when you have technical damage from the previous two days and the next day the market gaps up, you don't want to buy that tape. You want to you know, you make sure that tape gets rejected off the previous day's levels and confirm starts putting in downward prices. That's exactly what happened. The queues literally got rejected from Thursday's lows and went right on the day, right? Finished the day uh, up a nickel. I mean, the NASDAQ 100 was up like 100, 130 uh, 30 points. Uh, and we called flat. So the Qs have to hold on to 350.750. See that, guys? That's the low for the last two days. 350.750, 350.750. If the Qs start losing 350.750, we're going down to August 18 lows, which is roughly uh, 354.70s. And any close below 354.70s, you have a $10 pocket potential swan dive to the next 150-day uh, uh, EMA. Uh, SPYs, right? SPY is already broken formation. Okay, this was the bottom channel here. We talked about this in the webinar on Thursday. Uh, 433 uh, got taken out, put in new lows, and now it's the next merit area of potential soft landing is this 429 level, which is the 150 day EMA. Any close below the 150 day EMA on the SPYs. Uh, gets it all the way down to 425 and all the way down to 423. So it, the spies have to hold on uh, to this 429 level. Uh, when you look at the IWM, this has been uh, underperforming, for the exception of the last run, this has really been uh, underperforming all the major other uh, ETFs. Again, just like, uh, just like spies, this thing was broken uh, last week, and now it's holding on to the linear regression lines. You can see here it stopped perfectly. At the linear regression line again when new traders turn around and say hey dan why do you have all these lines well again they don't st stocks just don't stop randomly the reason why it's stock because again because these silly lines right so iwm needs to hold on to this 176 level okay if the iwm does not again then i'm not saying the market's gonna go down every single day we obviously know that's not the truth even in the worst performing markets uh we still have instances of debt cat balances some aggressive rallies in between but just like we saw uh, in 2022, when you are below the 50-day moving average, 80% of all the days are going to be down days. That's the, and that's the reality. And my uh, playbook, my blueprint uh, during uh, 2022 was, you know, short, you know, short the days that had a trend to the downside and avoid the days that had dead cat balances. Again, those dead cat balances are irrelevant. Dead cat balances are what they are. They're dead cat balances. They could bounce 50 cents. They could bounce five dollars. But the point is, and we saw this. On Friday, before the rug pull, uh, as soon as we saw futures getting pulled, we saw bids getting pulled $2 at a clip. So the market is 
uh, very, very uh, sitting on very thin ice right now. And these levels that we just spoke about, uh, write them down. Okay, write them down. Even if you don't trade the ETFs, uh, write them down and use them as a, a course of reference. Uh, going into this week again, um, you know, any gap up should get faded out uh, of the market. That's exactly what happened on Friday. Uh, as, until the queues start building above, for the from the from the from the point of reference, for for the for the market to get up dead cat bounce, a truly dead cat bounce back to the five day and even ten day moving average, the queues have to reclaim three sixty two. Okay, it, it's gotten rejected below three sixty two now back to back days. But before we start talking about reclaiming back 362s, they have to hold on to this 350, 357.50 because if they don't, we're going to start going uh, lower prices. So let's talk about uh, let's talk about some pivots. Um, I came in short. I came in short Nvidia, right? I came in short Nvidia on Thursday into Friday. If you guys remember, Nvidia got absolutely destroyed, absolutely destroyed from this 420 level. So I came in short. Um, the stock was. The stock was down another three dollars after the close. I was making some covers. You know, everything was good. And Friday, the market gapped up. And unfortunately for me, Nvidia didn't just gap up two, three dollars. It was up like nine, ten bucks. So after everything was said and done, you know, we went from being up like four or five bucks on Nvidia to actually losing net net uh, three dollars on the trade. So I was, you know, wasn't wasn't happy about it, but. You know, it is what it is. And then obviously NVIDIA started moving lower. Um, I obviously still like this thing lower, especially if the market continues to get pulled. Um, I'm going to watch the bottom channel here. You see how it just keeps on just holding on uh, to the 100-day SMA? I'm going to watch this 100-day SMA because if this thing loses it, then we're going to go back to those dreaded uh, August lows to retest the bottom channel here. Um, but Tesla, right? Tesla definitely saved the day. On Friday, uh, it, we had an initial pivot, 254 of builds below can flush. So the first pivot on Tesla, it lost to 54, went down to 52 and bounced, right? So I covered pretty much about three quarters of my position just for a scalp, got stopped out th at the rest, and Tesla at one point uh, almost went green in a day. And then towards the afternoon, we knew, we know, we knew, and this is kind of the most important part, if you scroll up here, right? If you scroll up here, right? 252 now is the 50-day EMA. If it builds below, it can flush more. I would say it flushed. So it lost 252. Uh, it lost that 252 level and the stock sold off $8, literally $8 in the afternoon. One of, one of the most violent sell-offs uh, I've seen of real you know, recent memories in the afternoon. Uh, I'm still holding about 25% of the position. I, I think we see at some point this week, I, I think we see to between 235 and 240, somewhere around the 238 level would be great for this interval. It'll close at 244. So uh, if it starts losing Friday's channels for Monday uh, or even Tuesday, whatever the case may be, um, I think we do see a 240, 238 level uh, for a potential next uh, soft landing. Uh, buyers are coming in really aggressively right from the word go on Tesla um, Friday morning the 247 and a half weeklies, and then they were coming for next week's, which is this week's expiration, uh, the 245s. Everything's correlating. Uh, now we just want to see if we can get to this 238, uh, 240 level, level of, congratulations again, guys. Congratulations for all you guys who are still, uh, who are still uh, short Tesla going into this week. Uh, HPQ, uh, 2678 earnings low for bills below can flush, has not flushed yet. Has not flushed yet. It's sitting there. It's sitting there literally at earnings lows. Watch HPQ this week. If this thing confirms this channel, uh, HPQ will get hit. Uh, Marvel uh, never never saw this 5179 level. Meta never saw uh, this 293 level. So this is basically this is basically uh, where we were short from, from Thursday, the 414 level and then the 41140 pre-market lows. Went, went all the way down to 407, 408. The problem is uh, it's stuck. My, my, you know, it stopped us out in the next day uh, on the 419 area. So we wound up losing about three bucks in the trade, but it is what it is. Um, NVIDIA, blah, 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 Tesla. And we, you know, and just in case we were looking for upside. So Tesla definitely saved the day. Uh, definitely, definitely saved the day on Friday. Uh, and now we are set up for this week's as well. So here's some pivots we should definitely be watching. Uh, watch Hewlett Packard, guys. Definitely keep an eye on Hewlett Packard for this week. 
Again, it's just sitting right on earnings lows. A couple of names that um, I started positions with, with this past week, they still haven't cracked, right? They still haven't cracked, but I'm still sitting in them. Uh, cargo, I've been short now for a week. I'm still waiting for it to crack. It's literally at my, I feel like it's a broken record, but it's literally has not cracked, can't go move higher. It's literally at my uh, short entry. So I'm just waiting for this damn thing to crack. Uh, I also started a position this week on MGNI. I'm um, up about a nickel there, nothing big yet, but I'm still waiting for these things to just crack. I mean, I, I love these earnings low plays. Sometimes you'll be in these things for a number of weeks, but when they finally have that expansion day, it's going to be good. Again, just kind of a case in point, I've been sitting in uh, Peloton for two weeks. Uh, we have about a 10, 11% move uh, on this thing. I just got a runner left, but I'm still looking for that uh, $4 washout, uh, washout uh, move. So that's that. Um, let me give you guys a couple of names to watch this week. Uh, obviously, keep an eye on Tesla. Uh, if it starts losing uh, Friday's channels, I, I do think we get, uh, I do think we get 230 between 235 and 240 on that uh, soft landing. But let me give you guys some other names. I'm definitely watching. Look at Goodyear Tires again. Another name, another name that is a potential earnings lows plays. It's just a matter of time. Eventually, it's going to lose this whole channel here. And it's going to get lower. I've been watching this thing for a couple of weeks. Has still not, uh, has still not uh, confirmed. I, and I love this Apple chart, guys. Again, it doesn't necessarily have to uh, confirm, but boy, oh boy, we're getting very, very close. If Apple confirms this whole entire formation, uh, it's going to be a pretty good move down. And look at Neo, right? Look at Neo as well. Uh, Neo as well had a big gap up, kind of did nothing for the last couple of days. Watch Neo this week. If it starts losing this whole channel here. Maybe you have uh, you know maybe have more uh, selling to come in. So that's it, guys. We're prepared on the ETFs. We're prepared for uh, the individual equities. Now the key is sit back, relax, be patient, and let it confirm organically. Guys, God bless you. Have a great remainder of your weekend. And with God's help, I'll see you all on Monday. Take care.